this for me? Draw out 30 cc. Perfect. Release the tourniquet. Remove the needle. Bend your arm up real tight, sir. And hold that for two minutes, please. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Freddie. I'm going to go ahead and go over how we process the 30cc Rebella PRP kit. Uh, we've just completed a patient blood draw, so the next step in the process is to add the blood sample into the PRP tube. Now in the syringe, we have 27 cc's of whole blood with 3 cc's of anticoagulant just to prevent the blood from coagulating while you're in the process of, of doing PRP. So the first step in inserting the blood into the tube is to pop off this rubber gasket on top of the 30cc kit. And then from there, I'm simply going to pop off the cover of the needle, insert it into the spout in the middle of this PRP kit. And I'm going to gently just reinsert the blood into the sterile 30cc Rubella PRP kit, gently applying pressure to the plunger so I could have a pretty consistent flow of blood being fed into the tube. And I've hit that mark, so we have the rest of the blood I'm going to put away here. Now the next step before we spin it, or put it in the centrifuge, is to weigh out your specimen and an appropriate counterbalance which reads out to 75.4 grams. So I'll go ahead and weigh the counterbalance to make sure that I'm within the appropriate weight range in counterbalancing. Uh, we have an allotment of about, about up to 0.6 grams difference in weight over and under between the blood specimen and the counterbalance. So the counterbalance is 75.1 grams, and let's double check the blood. And the blood is at 75.4 grams, which is okay for us to now start the process in, in getting PRP. So to start, you want to go ahead and place the specimen of blood and the counterbalance on opposite buckets from each other. From there, securely press down the lid to shut the centrifuge. Now for our first spin cycle, we like to spin our PRP at 3400 RPMs for a duration of five minutes. All I have to do is press the start button, you would press twice and once the centrifuge activates, you'll notice the RPM slowly ramp up before the timer of five minutes counts down to zero. All right, so once the centrifuge opens and the spin cycle stops, you can go ahead and pull out the counterbalance, put it aside, and you can go ahead and take a look at the tube with the blood specimen that we just spun down to check for separation. As you can see, there's three distinct layers. We have the red blood cells at the bottom. In the middle, you can see the uh, cloudy, milky mass in the middle, which is what we call our buffy layer. And everything else on top from the red blood cells to the top layer right there would be your plasma layer. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna separate the red blood cells and the plasma. So what I'm gonna do is isolate the plasma and the buffy layer. And I'm gonna add it into a clean second syringe to do our second spin to further cost share PRP for use in our next procedure. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get our screw pusher, which we'll use to help us push the plasma into a separate syringe and open you know, a 30 C, a 60 cc syringe because I'm out of 30. So to use screw pusher, the first thing you're going to do is unscrew the cap at the bottom, rotating it clockwise. And once it's off, you want to have the screw pusher prep like this, where we have this base piece all the way at the top, ensuring that there's no protrusion coming out the middle. And then to actually insert the tube, all you gotta do is press down into this holder part, uh, put your hand here and rotate the tube just until you get a little bit of resistance uh, to ensure you're keeping the tube in place. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to screw off the next cap. And then from here, I'm going to start the process of separating the red blood cells from the plasma. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start rotating the screw pusher until I get the plasma at the very top of the spout over here. So once I have it pushed up to the tip right there without overflowing, I'm going to grab the same syringe I prepped earlier 
I'm just gonna attach it to the PRP tube. Now to attach it, all you have to do is line up the lure locking tip with the spout of the 30cc PRP kit and basically the surface of the hole. And then from there, I'm going to continue the process of using the screw pusher to push the stuff I want into a syringe that will then house the plasma sample. So as you can see, with each rotation of the screw pusher, we push up the green cap and as a result, it starts pushing everything up into the syringe we have attached. And a good indicator to let you know to stop is when you see a little bit of a red flash at the bottom of the uh, syringe we just attached you can see the distinct separation of the red blood cells in the Buffy. So I really want to harvest that white bed right there in the middle. From there, see a red tinge, the connecting point between the syringe and the PRP kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and cap the syringe um, with the needle, 18 gauge, one and one half needle. Reason being is we're gonna take this plasma sample and then transfer it sterile 30 cc syringe for the additional spin and then from there i'm going to take the plasma we just separated from the red blood cells and insert it into this new prp kit now what we're going to do now for the second spin is we're going to counterbalance the final product we're working with so 59.7 more within the 0.6 gram difference in weight that we're able to work with so as we did with the first spin place the tubes in opposite buckets from each other and I'll securely close the centrifuge lid and then from there our second spin we're actually going to spin it at 4,000 rpms and our spin cycle will just be three minutes this time around and we're just going to wait until it completes the cycle. This is the completion of the second spin let's go ahead and take a look at our plasma sample and see how it turned out. So after the second spin, you'll notice the plasma in general is a lot more refined with the straw yellow color. And if you look closely, you can see a concentration of the platelet slash buffy layer in the middle, which is signifying that we just basically concentrate as, mu as much platelets as possible to give us a pretty effective PRP product. So from here on out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just harvest, or excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out some of the platelet pore plasma that we won't be using for the procedure. It's gonna leave quite a bit in here to use as platelet rich, where I'm gonna concentrate some of the remaining plasma with the platelets we recovered to create us our final product. Now our provider requested nine cc's of PRP. So I'm just gonna push four cc's of PPP into a 10 cc syringe and I'm going to use the rest to concentrate the final PRP product. What you'll actually need are two separate 10 cc syringes and you'll also need two 18 gauge by one and one half inch needles. So before we do it then we're going to go back to the screw pusher tool and we're just going to go ahead and attach the tool again like we did last couple of times. So I'm just going to attach that. From there I'm just going to take the screw pressure and I'm going to push some of this back up into the neck of the 30cc kit. And I'm just going to get to the point where some of the plasma is starting to stick out the tip of the tube, but you know, not to where it spills over. Then I'll go in and attach the five, one of the 10 cc syringes. And like I said earlier, I'm gonna pull out about four cc's of just plasma that we'll go in and set aside for later. So I'm gonna go back to the little set of numbers facing towards me. And then on the syringe, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the numbers here to give me accounts of how much plasma I've pushed into the syringe before I take the syringe off. Earlier, I need to get rid of four cc's of plasma. It gives a remainder of nine. So it's gonna go to the four, which is right here. So just to take it off, I can just wiggle it from side to side until it pops off. And from here, I'll go ahead and attach 10 cc syringe to the tip of the neck there. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and push out some more plasma. In this case, I'm gonna take out about two and a half or three cc's worth of plasma. And then from there, I'm going to attach the needle to draw up additional plasma and use that plasma to mix the remaining contents by drawing it out, reinserting it, causing that disruption to concentrate the plasma with the platelets and the remaining growth factors. So I'll go ahead and proceed. So I went about two and a half cc's. I think I'm gonna go with three. I'm gonna pop the syringe off. And that's a brand new needle. From there, I'm gonna use the needle to draw up some of the plasma. So you stick it into the spout there. And you're gonna pull some out. So I'm pulling out about an additional one to two cc's of plasma. And from there, I'm just gonna gently, I guess, draw it out, insert it back in to cause the remaining plasma and platelets to mix. Um, as you can see, it's slowly, slowly changing color, which indicates that you are mixing the plasma and the remaining growth factors and RBCs and creating the final PRP product. I ran out plunger space. I'm just gonna go to the biohazard right here. Let's push out some of the air bubbles. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and resume drying up plasma. So I'm just gonna go through the mixing process. And then once I've mixed everything from what I can see in the middle, I'm just gonna continue with drawing it out with the screw pusher and needle until I draw out the remaining contents. over here which you want to see and then for the regular PPP straw colored plasma so from here we just go ahead and give it to the provider so they can go ahead and continue the procedure with the patient.